Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, this is uh, Coach Josh Graves. I'm here with Dr. Justin Lin from Rehab and Revive. Uh, this is my physical therapist, a really good dude. Um, one of the smartest uh, physical therapists in the game. Also somebody that looks at not just uh, the muscular system or the skeletal system in the human body, but I feel like he really works the whole kinetic chain. We're talking in uh, the skeletal, the muscular, and the nervous system. He's going to talk to you about how your nerves play into a part of the pain that a lot of people experience. It's not all just muscular, right? Um, so this is a, a good resource that I, I, let, I lean into frequently. And I've had a couple of questions as we've been doing these at-home training things. And what, some of those questions are about how do we balance out the shoulders for people when all they really have access to a body weight is a lot of pushing movements. How do we make sure we're making the most out of the push-up in general? And then also, like, what are some things that you should be looking at at home in the way you're sitting and your workstations and the, the type of injuries that we're kind of predicting are going to start popping up because people are sitting more, moving less, or moving differently, more intensely in their living rooms. Uh, so we're going to go into a lot of these different topics today. But first, let me introduce Dr. Justin. Thank you for being here today, sir. Uh, let's give Dr. Justin a round of applause. Hey, thanks, everyone. Fitness Fire community, totally glad to be here. And, and those who are going to tune in later, I think uh, hopefully we'll make it a good, worth your time uh, to educate you a little bit better, uh, to be, to, to, you know, really kind of utilize what, what we have, our creativity. I think that's the cool thing right now. We get to be a little bit more creative on, on what we get to do to take care of ourselves uh, and, you know, work on wellness, fitness, uh, you know, everything Josh is saying. So uh, very excited to be here and to help out uh, any way I can. Love it, man. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to try and get just to the meat and potatoes today and just try to give you guys some valuable stuff. Um, Dr. Justin's point, man, it's just a cool time where um, we both had a little bit of time, so we were able to collaborate and just say, hey, man, can we get together and can we speak a good message for our people? Um, and we'll see what comes out of it. So, um, so I'm going to go right into it. I'm going to go into the first question today, which uh, we wanted to bring up was this really just with a lot of these at-home workouts, a lot of these body weight programs, right? Uh, a lot of people have access to things that are on there. They're doing a ton of push-ups. They're doing a ton of mountain climbers, bear crawls, um, a lot of stuff on the front of their shoulders and don't have a lot of pull options in their home, right? Not everybody has the ability to pull up vertically or to do horizontal rows. So I was talking to Dr. Jess today. I was like, dude, how do we give people some balance for their shoulders um, when maybe they can't pull as much right now. And then the, there's a two part question in that because the other part is if you are doing a lot of push ups, how do you at least make sure you're getting the most out of the push ups you're doing and you're not damaging your shoulders doing poor push ups? So those are, it's a two fold question is how do we protect people's shoulders from all the pushing and the bad pushing patterns that we're probably seeing right now in people's living rooms? So I'll kind of turn it over to Dr. Justin. Yeah. Um, no, this is a great question, Josh. And, uh, and, and I think the, they're pertinent. I think uh, a little bit of uh, the understanding of the push-up or the perfect push-up is re really important. I sent Josh some information. We'll, we'll post this on the chat uh, or whatnot. But um, you want to be able to, you know, what happens is, is we all learn push-ups a little differently, I think. And then no one's really breaking it down. Obviously, the professionals like Josh, uh, his coaches, myself, uh, you know, we also even sometimes bring, our, bring in a different different uh, understanding but uh, but basically what it is is uh, when you're doing a push-up a lot of times I think the mo most the biggest emphasis I like to instruct is always have the windows of your elbows facing towards you know your head um, and that a lot of people will do it this way they'll collapse it they'll basically leave themselves in neutral but you waste, basically want to be able to hold yourself in supination right here and then turn it and still leave that window up and so that's how you set it up now, what that does is mechanically, mechanically, you're setting up that, you know, rotation in the shoulder. You're locking in your shoulder blade. Now, the basis of all our shoulder motions uh, always, always comes from our shoulder blade. And so I think understanding that mechanics first and, 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 then, and then feed forwarding that way is, is what you want to do is you want to keep that in. So it's a little bit more of the narrow push-up versus the, the wide ones. And the, and the moment you basically break the plane of your, your first or second rib, what happens is mechanically when you have this dysfunction, a lot of people are, are hurting their necks, they're hurting their shoulders. Uh, your shoulders are going to ride into your clavicles or your collarbone, and that's going to slam into your, your cervical joints. It's going to pinch a few nerves. Uh, and then what's going to happen is uh, sometimes the nerves get blocked or, or, or the joints in your neck. Uh, really, really get messed up and they get pinched. They, you know, have the impingement syndromes. 
Uh, and then what happens after that, as soon as you're up here, this shoulder, there's no place to go. Uh, and when there's no place to go, it's gonna go to the path of least resistance. And when you have the path of least, path of least resistance, it's gonna throw that bone, because bone is pretty dense, right? It's gonna beat up the capsule, the joint capsule, and slide forward. Um, then you have the issues, which I, I deal with quite a bit, is the carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, the thoracic outlet, those nerves get pinched. Um, and then you start that in inflammation process. Now your body's always gonna protect a few things first. It's gonna protect your organs, your circulation, your nerves. Uh, and, and the moment you get yourself in dysfunction, who cares about muscles, right? Muscles is kind of like lower in the totem pole. Um, your body will tear itself. It will end up with bone spurs, all that stuff, because you are you got faulty mechanics. And that's, you know, does it happen tomorrow if you just started push-ups today? No, it happens later down the road. And when that happens later down the road, your, your body's going to compensate. And so understanding at least the right form uh, first is, is going to be the, 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 the essence um, of it. And, and so at least that's how you take care of it. Learning that your shoulder, the, the proper mechanics, uh, is, is there's three, three, three parts. Is your collarbone is, uh, is accountable for a third. The shoulder joint itself is another third. And then the shoulder blade is another third. So um, you want all these things to be working uh, in sync. And that's, that's going to be the big thing. Uh, uh, so understanding that first, I wanted to kind of a, a sort of answer that and then tie that into your question, Josh, is yeah. that, you know, with, yeah, go ahead. You, you know, know, I think you're, I think you're spot on, man. I think that, uh, couple, so, and it's funny, man, we, all my, uh, I'll find a lot of the members that are on right now or whatever, they know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm maniacal about getting those elbows back, right? I see these yeah, 90 yeah. degree push-ups, and we got to get these things down. Um, I think that a couple of things, I mean, if you can see my screen here, yep. I, I think that, uh, I don't know, when I grew up, nobody taught me push-ups. So, and push-ups ended up being like the punishment for most things, right? right. So like, yeah, if you were late for practice, drop down, get on your face, give me 10 push-ups. If uh, like pretty much anything you did wrong, it was do some push-ups. And it's exactly. not us mechanics, so we're out there frying our shoulders doing these terrible push-ups. Um, so doc, I just wanted to demonstrate what you're yeah. doing and tell me if I'm, if I'm on here. And if there's anything yes. you wanted to correct or uh, critique a little bit, I'd love to get that. Absolutely. So the first push up being this hands out by the head position, elbows wide, 90 degree type of thing going on, shoulders jamming in the front of the capsule. That is the opposite of what we're talking about. Correct? Right. This is a bad push up. Right. Right. Regardless of the fact that I can do the work and get up and down, that is still not correct or a good push up. Yes. And over right. time, you're going to break down. Um, that's exactly. and then you know, hands off. talked about kind of compound the compounding effect, right? You do one or two of those, it may not fry out your shoulders. Um, it's kind of like if you eat a hot if you eat a hot dog or a hamburger or something like that, you're not gonna get fat today. Yes. If you get a hot dog and a hamburger every day for the next two years, you're gonna wake up one day and not like the way your body feels and looks. It's kind of the same thing with this stuff, right? If we're doing one or two every now and then, not a big deal, but you times that by ten thousand, all of a sudden you've created some massive force and some major problems for your shoulder down the line, right? Right, exactly. So, so push up, right? Hands kind of right underneath the shoulders. Uh, elbow pits facing forward. Yes. And those elbows go back towards the hips as I move my whole body through the shoulder like a plank. Right. It's like a plank, right? Or the yoga planks, right? Exactly. Shoulder blades glide. Is that, uh, that looking pretty yeah. solid? Right? If you're doing it right, I always tell people, if you've got the right form in any type of workout, your core muscles naturally automatically they fire. That's how you know it's efficient. Uh, and that's what we preach here at, at Rehab Revive is, is, is efficiency of the micro mechanics and, and all that. But, but the, yeah, Josh, you, you have that spot on is to really engage, lock that in. That throws your, your, your pec muscles into uh, more of a stabilizing versus a propagating um, what we call some of these, these big prime mover muscles. And, and when you have prime mover muscles, they're going to yank things out. You always need to stabilize um, and, you know, stabilize before mobilize is what I always preach here. So, um, but that's basically what, what kind of understanding that, that thing is now, yes, there's a lot more uh, pushing activities, less pulling activities at our home. Uh, we, a lot of us don't have necessarily some of the necessary equipment, but uh, there are some things that you can do. And, uh, and I want to share that with you. Uh, and I think uh, as, as a way to balance and to engage a, your, your, your shoulder blade or your scapular stabilizers, you want to get those guys stable. Now, uh, if you, any of you have uh, like a broomstick at home, swifter stick, 
Um, you pull that out over. <laughs> yeah, I, this ready. I was already thinking. Boom. <laughs> I was just trying to be efficient. I didn't want to run around. Um, or if you have like a like a towel or even a, like a yoga strap or belt, even like a leather belt, or you know what you may have. I think that's the important thing is you can create pulling type activities. You don't need therabands, uh, whatnot. So here's like a great one is just really try to pull, and then you're you're basically engaging through here, right? You're gonna lock it in. And you can just hold it. A lot of people don't realize shaking is actually a good thing. It's that natural, um, you're trying to sync up your brain to your, 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 your body. That's that neuromuscular uh, kind of like, like pattern. Um, so you basically want to lock that in and you want to hold it. And you want to hold it till the shakiness stops. Now, if you can engage that and you could push or pull, I mean, sorry, you can pull as hard as you want. Um, but I always, start, I always start low and slow, low and slow. Now you want to hold it, engage it. Now you can drop that shoulder blade and kind of work on some of that. You can do some shoulder clocks, shoulder blade clocks. You know, you can manage basically engaging that. You want to go that that's 12 o'clock, that's six o'clock, right? That's three o'clock, that's, you know, nine o'clock. And you can see how that understanding that shoulder blade and educating yourself now goes a long way. Um, now you can do that in different ranges too. You can pull, pull it over your head, right? And you can hold that down. It's like you're doing a, a lat pull down. Now you can create and generate your own force. Now, I don't know if Josh's been doing anything like this, but you know, this is very powerful stuff and, and very easy to do. You could do it with the dowel, like I said, you know, so if you got a stick, same thing, you're just holding it there and you're just, I'm just creating my own self tension and Josh doing that, I can see that right now. You can do that at home. You can do it all different ranges, right? You can do these, these rows this way, you know, just by locking yourself up, you know, and then engaging. The whole point is you don't want to set yourself up for a rotator cuff injury later on. Uh, you know, and, and Josh and I were talking about that yesterday is like, we could see a lot of elective surgeries happening probably in the future, just because you started something today and it manifests its, itself to something tomorrow, right? Or later down the road. Um, so really setting yourself up. Now, another cool one, uh, like I said, the shoulder clock's really easy to do to set yourself up before you start doing these push-up activities. Because, um, you know, pushing is something that's, that's just inherently in our, our DNA, you know, we're since the beginning of time. So, um, but that overuse and trying to rebalance or recalibrate our, our shoulder, shoulder girdle complex is going to be the key. Now, I have another um, on my YouTube, uh, and we'll post that all that stuff a little bit later too. I, I talk about um, there's other activities you can do, and and really there's there's things like um, I, I kind of get on my like a child's pose like this, right? And then I'm doing um, like I just kind of use a towel and whatnot. I call it shoulder sliders, or if you have like furniture or furniture sliders, you can use those and really just start going this way, right? Really focusing on form. And that's really cool too. So you're not really pushing per se, and I think Josh is going to grab something. Um, and what you can do and also in this child's, or, or you can even do this on your desk. If I'm just kind of like this, I'm keeping my head in neutral and I'm just trying to raise that up. And, and you can see I'm, I'm shaking a little bit and, and whatnot, and just kind of give yourself a break from all that typing. Because all we're doing all day is being on the computer set. Yeah, just like exactly. And Josh, how does that feel? What do you notice? I definitely, uh, definitely, I'm getting some some good activity from those. Exactly. Guys. And uh, I don't have to push super hard on the ground. I feel like if I just keep the, the slider on the ground, yes. the gravity's kind of doing some of that work exactly. for Exactly. You're keeping that forearm uh, playing. That's going to be the key uh, to take care of ourselves. Um, and so I think those are some, some cool, cool tips that uh, at least some of the things we do here at the clinic, um, you know, our, our goal is you don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment. You can do it yourself. You can do it at home. And, and that's how you're going to rehab uh, effectively and efficiently because you can do it anywhere. Um, can I touch on that a little bit? Sorry? Can I touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say that, um, you know, I think sometimes what's hard though with some of this stuff too is like, even though I, I understand that was one thing that bodybuilding did really well um, for me when I was growing up is they got, they had this emphasis on like, make sure you feel your bicep doing the thing, your tricep, your shoulders are forward, your triceps aren't firing, pull your shoulder back and isolate the tricep. As much as I don't like the isolation exercises as much now in my personal programming, um, learning how to communicate with my muscles was a gift that bodybuilding gave me. So when I do something like that, I understand how to use my lats to pull my arms down and I can get that feeling, right? It's, it's, it's kind of almost a skill to connect and communicate with those things, but it doesn't feel as like 
challenging as a push-up feels, right? So I think half the balance that we face as, as trainers or coaches sometimes is it's like, how many calories does that burn? Or that, like, it's not sexy to sell movements that don't, like, destroy people sometimes. Um, so can you also just maybe, like, help me there a little bit and reiterate to the people that um, during this time, it's important to move, but I don't know if we're like, I don't know if setting a new push-up goal is the record is like, is the, or setting a new push-up record is the goal. I think being able to keep our shoulders healthy, stay balanced. Um, even if it means you got to do 500 of these little sliding movements that don't make yes. you sweat the way our push-up slides, there's still value in that. Even if it's not a calorie burner or a, or a puke in a bucket kind of exercise. Do you kind of agree with what I'm getting oh, at? Oh, 100%. Uh, and Josh brings up good points. Um, to reiterate to the public, uh, it's safety. Um, and really, you know, uh, you know our, our life, you know, you think of the yin yang, right? It's always that healthy balance. We're always, we, we need that balance to take care of ourselves. Um, and one of the things I, 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 I mar uh, or highlight to to the community at Rehab Revive is, look, if you can't do something basic, what makes you think you can do something even you know more difficult or a movement pattern that is more involved? I think we 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 lose sight of that. Like if you if you're not doing that perfect squat or that perfect form, um, what makes you think you can do some some crazy you know other type of exercise or you know mountain climbers or going on a big hike? Um, and you know otherwise you're gonna you're gonna form compensations. Our body is 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 this. I think of my my analogy to a lot of folks is our body is always modulating itself. And I think of those old stereo systems. My dad still has it. He's got all the little tuners and you're trying to tune that mid to so it's always trying to do it. but really we should be here everything should be even killed but if you're trying to tune it because let's say that button was broken then you got to change that sound and then you got to do that that frequency our bodies always do that and then you basically start breaking down these strings right or like a like a like a violin you know and then you start playing on the one string and that's when people then end up in in my clinic right like they've been playing on the same the string breaks uh -huh. and then it busts loose and then there's no options you ran out of options we all ran out of options and when you run out of options then then you know that's that's the breakdown um you know and and you don't need to like i said uh go for the record uh, and, and, and have like a thousand push-ups because that's great. You're just going to overdevelop one side. It's that healthy balance, um, you know, and, and usually you're going to do that with a lot of these stabilizing exercises uh, that, that I preach uh, nine times out of 10. I mean, even, you know, when I, uh, for Josh, like when he came in, I, I taught him uh, something for just to isolate his hip capsule. Um, and that was, you know, I think initially hard for him because he just didn't have that motor recruitment. Um, or lost sight of that after maybe an injury from a sport or lifting or something like that. Our body's going to adapt and change, but is that adapt uh, adaptation and change the most efficient in the end? And if it's not the most efficient, you're going to break down, then you're going to break the next string and then so on and so forth. That Somebody that. told me that uh, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So yes. what you're practicing is how you're adapting your body. So if you're to your point, if you're what you, if you're doing these all the time, guess what your body's gonna think a push up is, right? Every time you get into a, anytime you try to push anything, your shoulders are gonna hike up, your clavicle's gonna get crossed off, your, your shoulders are gonna run to the front of the shoulder capsule. So you gotta push open a door and you're using your faulty mechanics just to push a door open. And now we've got not only adaptation, but we have compound effect. And all that ends up being a catastrophic injury for a lot of people down the road when you're picking up a laundry basket or something silly. Yep. And that's usually what it is. Cause that's what I would say nine out of 10 people that come in here, they're like, doc, all I did was, you know, I dropped my pen, I picked it up and my back locked up. Right. And it's not because that action hurt you. I mean, it did, uh, but it was the straw that broke the camel's back. You, you were doing the same form. You picked it up, you learned it a bad habit from somewhere and, and you thought you could get away with it and you got away with it for, you know, maybe a thousand times. And then that thousand and first time, that's when it, it, it busts loose. Right. And so, um, you know, learning, you know, and having the right professionals with the, with the training and the, the keen eye um, is, is the, is the key to, to taking care of ourselves. Uh, one of the big things I say is just because you're fit um, doesn't mean you're well, you know, and vice versa. I'm that. I've been, uh, I've, <laughs> I can get away with a lot of things, but I've, uh, I've, I've really in the last, I would say in the last five years, I've tried to make it a, 
an obsession of mine to erase some of my faulty movement patterns and redevelop and relearn things that I just maybe didn't learn the first time and I've been starting to adapt to in certain ways. And it kind of sucks a little bit because in the beginning, if you're really, if you can bang out 100 pushups like this right now, and we go to correcting you to doing it properly, you may only be able to do like two or three. So yep. going from like 100 awful pushups to only two or three good pushups, to you, it feels like you're doing less. But to us, we know that that's actually a bet that's better in the long run. Like we're actually trying to protect you. So if, I, if, if I'm like, dude, I don't care if you've got a hundred of those, stop doing yes. it. Just give me one or two of these. I'll just take one. One, one great push up would be 10 times more beneficial for your body and your shoulders than 10 sloppy push ups. And then even going to doing the go, if you're stuck here and this is really tough for you, um, maybe go to an elevated push up. Start back on the wall, start on your yes. bed. Start on a tabletop, start on a chair, start working yourself back down to the ground with great mechanics. And I actually don't think it'll be that long to get you to the right stuff. But um, yeah, sometimes you got to take a step backwards to take like leaps forward. And um, I've had to do that for sure in a lot of movements in the last five years to kind of fix some of my, uh, my bad habits. Yeah. And, wh and why does it, you know, I think you brought up a good point. Why, why does it feel like you can only do less? And of course, everyone wants to do more and, and look great and, and look like they're, 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 they're pushing harder or more weight. Um, and I always say you actually doing it the right way, you end up using, you recruit more muscles uh, in the end. And then these are muscles that haven't been used. So they, they lack the oxidative kind of process that goes on there. And so, um, but in the end, you do gain it back quicker doing it right, uh, doing correctly uh, with the, with the forms in mind. And I think that's the, that's the fun part of, of what we get to do um, together, you know, in, 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 you know, different parts of the spectrum, but really kind of hone in on, on and really harness and, and understand that, that form safety uh, and, and positions are going to be the, the key to everyone's success in the long run. Super cool, man. Well, let's, uh, let's switch gears just a little yeah. bit. Um, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to wrap up here a little, a little quickly so we don't go crazy. Yeah. Over. We'll keep it around 30 if we can. Um, but another thought uh, we talked about is just other other positions, ways that we think, because we were talking about rotator cuffs, right? That was kind of what got us on this topic. And I was like, dude, I'm predicting that we're going to see some rotator cuff injuries in the near future because you've got people just jamming their shoulders forward. Um, and then we started talking and we're like, dude, people sit in the computers all day. People sitting back in their couch with yeah. <laughs> in these terrible positions, right? Um, what other, what other things could people be doing to, um, help put their mind on putting their body in better positions? And, you know, I think that maybe just this whole work at home cooped up situations, getting people to almost feel cooped up. Yep. You know what I mean? So how do we, what are some things that we can do to help people prevent, like getting their bodies to feel, I don't want people's bodies feeling awful when this is all over. So what are some ways that we keep people feeling healthy and good right now? Yeah. And I think, you know, we talked about yesterday, highlighted that, that, you know, working at home, I think more than ever now with everyone, with everyone staying at home, uh, understanding the efficient form to be sitting, uh, understanding the power of seat height, uh, understanding uh, alignment uh, in general is to, is to be, uh, you know, the best way to take care of yourself uh, instead of letting our body's going to do a couple of things. You know, the reason people are going to slouch or slump a little bit uh, partly is the, you know, our sits bone, right? It's, it's like a rocking chair, right? So naturally, depending on where you find yourself shifting, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to hit a, a certain part that is either going to rock back or it's going to rock forward. You're going to compensate that way, but you want to find that happy medium. And I, and I always, you know, grab like a, a pen, you know, you always want to find that efficient spot and, and you know, really want to balance, you know, and, and kind of find the right where, where your weight distribution is, right? And be able to balance that way. Um, so some of the things to highlight, and, and we're actually on my blog uh, today is going to go out uh, worth seeing how I kind of reconstruct just with towels um, and your laptop and, and some textbooks, uh, the right workstation, but you really want to be in as much neutral as possible. I always tell people you want to think of yourselves like Tyrannosaurus Rex. The more you're out here, the more you're going to have poor form. It's going to naturally throw you this way. But the more you're thinking of like Tyrannosaurus Rex, 
you're gonna you're gonna tend to move in, in, in you know if I'm gonna pick up this for instance right instead I can do this I can do this right but if my arms are short then the only way to do is actually find the right form so I just lock in my elbows and that's kind of one key you know it's just lock those in the moment you just start doing that easy you're gonna drop but the moment you're here whether it's your keyboard whether it's your mouse you just keep pinching. I just keep pinching. I keep engaging my rotator cuff the right way. I keep engaging my shoulder blade complex just by pinching. And if you want, you know, just grab a towel, throw that in there. And then the moment that towel or, or dollar bill, whatever, if that, if that dollar bill falls, guess what? You lost your form like that. It's out, right? You have to give your dollar to somebody if you drop it. Yeah, donate it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Put five bucks Shame in there. Shame on you for practicing bad posture. You lose your dollar. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's one way to think about it. You know, at least that's a quick tip. Um, but I have more on my blog, so just check that out on the uh, you know my website. Uh, it's gonna it should be released. You know, I think it should be coming out uh, pretty soon. Um, and uh, but yeah, I think. Um, what I'm noticing a lot of people doing, uh, including my wife is, uh, they're always trying to either self like manipulate and pop themselves. Just don't do that. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of that, the reason that happens, uh, is a couple of things. You're starting to create low grade inflammation. Now it, low grade inflammation, gravity is coming down at a rate of about 200 pounds per half hour. So imagine what eight hours is like. That's, you know, that's about three, th three tons, you know, you're doing this day in, day out. And, and then on top of that, you stack that with poor posture guess what? You know, I always want that alignment so that the, the gravity lines, right? They're, they're perpendicular to the floor, you know, are hitting you. And then you're just sitting over your whole body, not just part of your body. So you don't break down your lower back. You got lower back stuff, hip impingement stuff. Last week I wrote a blog. Um, uh, I call it the COVID special for, for a lot of the work, workstation people. So I wrote out a series of three next week. We're going to talk about neck and shoulder a little bit more too. Um, this week was about carpal tunnel and wrist. Um, so, um, but yeah, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the nerves, they start acting up. That's when people want to pop themselves and they're getting a little irritated. So they're just trying to fidget, find a way to move it. Uh, but really what needs to happen is those postural stabilizer muscles, just like the shoulder blade uh, that we talked about. That's, that's one way to start. Um, then it's the hip, uh, understanding the, the glutes and the hamstrings. And I know you're big on that as well, Josh. So, yeah, so glutes. So philosophically, we're the same on that one um, and understanding that. So um, those are going to be the big things I have been, I mean, literally this week alone, my clients, so I've been, I've been out of not seeing uh, patients for about uh, two or three weeks. Uh, my phone blew up, <laughs> like 60 text messages. Everyone's hurting themselves at home. So, um, so it's not, you're, you're not alone if that's what's happening, um, but really finding the efficient and all this stuff's on our YouTube. Uh, I think Josh will post some of this stuff up too. I gave him a few links um, that we can throw up on chat, but yeah, hopefully that, you know, that answered um, some of the, the big things I've been seeing a little bit more in our, in our community. Yeah, that's super helpful, man. Thank you so much. I think the T-Rex thing was, uh, was helpful. And even just thinking about that, I'm going to have to adjust my, my, my Zoom station here because this is a, uh, I'm literally sitting on one of these little uh, pillow things. Cool. Yeah. I'm on a high, uh, the, the computer on like a high chair, right. uh, which feels okay. And I feel like I can kind of sit up, but it's definitely not it's easier to sit. Yeah. Like that's me natural right now. Yes. If you're talking from a side, you probably, you probably, you probably, uh, disfriend me. So I, <laughs> I'm going to have to get up right there, but Hey man, this was super helpful. Dr. Justin, um, yeah. man, I'm excited to post this. I think that we can, uh, I think this will be good to share with the community that couldn't make it today. I think there's some really good uh, value nuggets right away. I got some cool stuff with you from like the isometric holds with the pool. Yes. Uh, using the sliders. We can, we've been doing a lot of exercises with sliders in the, um, in our live virtual classes. A lot of it's been like ab work where they put their yeah. feet, sliders, they're pulling their knees to their chest or doing mountain climbers. But um, I saw that lat pull down. We could even do alternating lat pulls. Yes, exactly. We could uh, make variations of pulls off of that. I felt that. I got that. Yes. Um, we will definitely post all this stuff that we talked about today with your blogs and your YouTubes and try to connect you with our community as much as possible. I just want them to have the best resources available. Um, what else, man? How can we help you today, man? Thank you for your yeah. time. What can we do for you right now, Dr. Justin? Any way yeah. we can you and your community? Absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, you know, love to see you. I, I know some of you may be uh, signing up a little later, but I think w what I'm trying to do is really uh, uh, kind of continue a little, some of the social distancing stuff. Uh, 
even though technically we're, we're essential, I'm just taking some, some clients on case by case to come in, but we're doing all the safety sanitation measures. But telemedicine um, is something big uh, that, that I really uh, invested quite a bit on. Actually, I started doing this about two years ago um, to try to, and I didn't really put it live until just uh, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, <laughs> which is cool because I had all this proprietary stuff. And I always believe, like I said, you, you know, like I said earlier, you always want, you know, if you're, if you're going to go a direction, you're not, you're just not going to hop in a car and, and drive aimlessly if you, if you want to go somewhere. So, you know, with the goals in mind, you know, we want to, we want to promote like the right plan. Uh, and I think the plan is always going to be the key. And that's what, whether people come in here in person, get the hands-on care or the right instruction of the rehab rehabilitation exercises and tips and, and all that. And I think now is the best, better time uh, more than ever. So we've got telemedicine uh, running uh, as well. And, uh, you know, and, and you guys can email uh, our staff or, or call them to, to educate you a little bit more. We've got a great platform um, that's uh, HIPAA encrypted. Uh, and, and so it's not just Skype or, or whatnot or Facebook time or FaceTime or whatever. Um, uh, that's going to keep your health information uh, private. Uh, so I made sure I, I, I wanted to hold ourselves to the to the highest example or the highest standard possible uh, for everyone's uh, health and safety. Um, so um, yeah, spread the news. Tell others that that we have this going on. I'm doing some YouTube uh, live stuff uh, for the next like I did some couple weeks. I'm gonna do some in the next couple weeks probably as well. So uh, I'll have Josh share that over over some time. Uh, that'd be great. So you know, any kind of support, just just telling uh, telling people. Oh, and I also if those that are interested in telemedicine, I wrote a, a consumer guide ebook um, just so people. Uh, and whether it's physical therapy or, or, or personal training or, 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 or medicine, uh, I think it's just great uh, questions to ask yourselves or, or have or ask uh, before hiring a professional uh, to invest your, your time and your resources. Uh, and so I think, yeah, uh, th that's, that's how you can help. Uh, you know, keep, keep, I keep trying to, uh, one of my biggest, uh, you know, missions at, when I created this clinic nearly a decade ago was to do a huge community outreach uh, and, and safety. And that's what my YouTube channel has been about. So please subscribe there. Uh, that's, that's been a big hit for, for, for our practice as well. So um, it's just educating and empowering everyone uh, day by day that, that you have the control over your pain. Don't let pain um, victimize you. Um, and, and I always tell people, you know, pain, you know, this is, this is a short period of time, but once you get, you know, get, get a hold of it and, and take care of yourself, that's, that's going to be the key to, 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 you know, overcoming a lot of this pain. We can work through pain, right? Um, many people do uh, all the time, but if you can be your best self, if you can be your, your most efficient self, um, life gets so much better. And I can tell you that, um, you know, personally and professionally. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Justin. Really appreciate your time, brother. Um, I, I would be down maybe for one or two minutes to take a, a question or two. Did, would you yeah. do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down. My, my afternoon's free. I just we gotta, got, a, got a couple people on the call. Um, any, any, um, and I'll, 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 I'll also just use a disclaimer for Dr. Justin. He's probably not um, going to answer like your very super specific, um, uh, ailment questions, right? Like that's, that that's probably a little bit more detailed and to his point, like, it's not really a one size fits all kind of thing, right? Like a lot of the times he's gonna look at what's really going on, diagnose the, like a plan for you and help you actually move through a plan for your specific issue. That can't really be done in a minute or two. But if you have general questions, like we were talking about with pushes, uh, workstations, um, something weird that you felt recently, um, anything like that, what kind, of, what kind of questions? Any questions on the call right now? Yeah, either jump on or Shoot it on the chat. Uh, Dr. Justin, this is hey. Coach Dell from hey. Fitness on Fire. Yes, hi. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for your uh, for being here and um, giving us some good info today. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. What's your um, so I got an hey, I got an issue. <laughs> so um, I I do a lot of running, a lot of trail running, um, circuit training, weightlifting, and for a while I've had um, tight hips. But recently, I have been able to um, kind of just notice that sometimes I'm getting tightness, especially in my top of my right hip capsule, um, laying on my back and squeezing a ball 
will always get it to crack. Um, and kind of like it, it, it makes like a popping noise. Okay. Um, yeah, like the pubic shotgun, right? Like the, right. What's that? I think it's called the pubic shotgun. So, okay. um, yeah, so you're, you're trying to get it to like pop a little bit, right? Yeah, and it actually get, it relieves it. And so I usually do that before I go on my runs or work out. And I'm kind of noticing, oh, I feel a little bit tight. Maybe I'm getting a little lower back pain. Um, you know, I'll try stretching, doing my hip, stretching my hip flexors and whatnot. But I'll always manage to get a little pop if I squeeze in, um, you know, get my adductors to fire. So um, it just feels like maybe there's not a lot of space in there. So mm -hmm. I've never been to the chiropractor, but maybe I, I just figured I'd shoot that over to you. Yeah. Um, no, this is something definitely in our realm. Uh, I find uh, a lot of our clients uh, who who have things just get compressed. Like I said uh, earlier, that that gravity's coming down at a rate of about two hundred pounds per half hour, or nine point eight one mill meters per second squared. So I calculated that out, being the nerdy person I am. Um, but yeah, so basically, you're gonna things are gonna shift. Uh, and when they shift, um, what's gonna hold it in place? And it's destabilizing muscles, muscles, those deep hip stabilizers um, that really aren't necessarily, they're more about uh, prolonging your holds. And uh, Josh, I, I've given him some, some stuff, uh, some tools as well. Uh, and so why does that happen? Uh, like I said, it becomes unstable when things shift off axis. So let's say this is the, 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 the cup, the cuff part of your, your hip, as that slides forward, that's going to run into your, your anterior part of your pelvis, right? The front part of your pelvis. Then what, what's going to happen is then it's going to wedge itself in and then it's going to feel compressed because, you know, all you do is take a towel, start doing this to a towel, right? You're going to, we're doing a lot of twisting activities. Running requires twisting actually at the hip capsule, just subtle, maybe 10, 15 degrees. But what are you doing all the time, right? You know, if you're taking that, taking that, that tension, right? And if this is slack, you've taken up the slack and you just, as you, every repetition, you're just doing this. Now what happens is look, you know, you're, you've got that sucker compressed. Um, and so, uh, you know, the things that counterbalance, that really fight that are the deeper hip stabilizers, instead of the glutes, the quads, the, the hamstrings, uh, something a little bit more, more deep. You know, I liken it to an uh, analogy where, uh, you know, even on your picture, right, imagine you holding that, that bucket full of, that, you know, weighted bucket, you know, you bring it close to your body, you know, and that's what it is, you know, versus like if you hold the bucket out here and you're running with it, guess what? You're going to tire out. You're going to compensate. You're going to do all that stuff. So essentially that's yeah. what's happening at the hip joint and locking it up. And that's why you constantly need to keep, uh, you know, self manipulating that. Now it does reset it for a little bit, which is cool. But, uh, you know, what I would invite uh, you to do is do that same position uh, and, and hold it till the shakiness stops. Then you're going to feel the whole deep, structure that's why it worked you know quickly it helped a little bit popped but if you can hold it and kind of go through the shakiness until it stabilizes and until the shakiness stops you'll feel what i'm talking about and that's why that that's going to hold itself okay. and stabilize the joint a little bit better a little bit longer now repetitively when you keep manipulating yourself you make your joint unstable but you have to then do your job stabilize and, and one of my, one of the biggest things that, that in people's first or second session, I was like, you always need to stabilize before you mobilize. Right. You know, and then, and then if you mobilize, then you're going to stabilize right after. So, um, and that's, that's how you, you, you save your body from breakdown. Okay, cool. That helps a lot. Um, I've been seeing a sports, um, kind of like my sports, uh, therapist for on and off for about a year now. Um, usually when I'm in a little bit of pain is when I see him, he'll reset me, put me through some, uh, you know, some strengthening movement, and then it'll be good for a little bit, and then, you know, about a month later, I start kind of getting that, you know, pain in the, uh, you know, maybe the lower back even, um, yeah. and then the manipulation generally helps with it, but just temporarily, like you're just dating, so. Exactly. Um, okay. So, so what happens a lot of times, I think this is good for, for the community to understand, is that, you know, you get in, you either see a chiropractor, massage therapist, an acupuncturist or, you know, or myself, um, and it's really up to us. We have our body, all its different shapes and sizes have its natural inclinations or predispositions to set up for failure. Mine tend to be my left ankle and my left shoulder, right? I'll always have that problem. Now, it's important that you become the manager of it, right? And, and, and continue those exercises that, that you were initially given 
um, you know, by the professionals uh, and, and really maintaining it. And, and what I like in that too, uh, to my community is that, you know, your body's like this giant bank account, right? I call it the body capital. Yeah. You, you know, you do proper diet, you do proper sleep habits, good postures, you know, good workouts that are, are safe. Um, and, and what you do is you build up your body capital, you know, but then you go on a run and then you debit your body capital, right? So if you had a thousand points, you, your run, your marathon run may have gone 1500, right? And then you're, you're negative 500, you're in the red, you know, just like a bank account. And so it's a body bank account is what I call it. Um, and so now you're in, you're in debt and guess what? The debt collector, the pain collector always collects, <laughs> you know? And so until you do the right <laughs> little exercises, right? And, and when you do the little rehab stuff, it's like pennies in a piggy bank. You're just adding up, adding up, adding up. And then you want to go play basketball or snowboard for a day, you debit again. Then you add it up. Add it up. Your goal is to be in the black every time. And that's what those exercises are there for. Um, you okay. know, the right stuff. It, it, you know, same holds true with you guys in coaching and uh, is, is that, you know, like, look, I'm not going to have a six pack, you know, after one workout, right. I'm building that body capital. I'm building yeah. that body capital. And that's, that's my, my, my analogy to, to the community. You guys are welcome to use that, uh, you know, and just, yeah, like, you know, that's awesome. I love that analogy. <laughs> I think that makes, that, that makes it pretty people. easy to understand. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so you're, you're just adding the right rehabilitative exercises. They're not, you know, they're not glorious. They're not, they're not that exciting. You know, they're not fun. Per, in, 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 per se, but, but they're, they're just, it's that, it's that modest return is that 3% return on your, your investment. You know, you just put yeah. a dollar in, you'll get three cents in, you just keep compounding it and then you can add up and, 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 and do a good run, do a good Spartan race, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. That's going to be the key to everyone's success in the long run. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you so much. That, that helps me welcome. a lot. So I appreciate that. Yeah. You got it. Awesome. Good stuff, Dr. Justin. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll definitely have to do this again. I, I think this was awesome, man. Uh, whether we want to jump on YouTube together or do some sure. other kind of collab or get back on a call like this, maybe I'll yeah. be public a little bit more. Um, this is really a good first round, I think. And then, uh, like I said, I'll make sure that we share a lot of your stuff in the next week or so in, on the community yeah. with the members. I'll record this, send this to you so you have it. And then uh, we'll also repost this for the members that couldn't make it on today's call. And then um, you guys heard it from Dr. Justin, man. He's got a lot of really good resources from you guys on his YouTube channel with his blogs that he's been putting out. Um, he's been doing YouTube lives recently. And if you're even uh, interested in thinking about telemedicine, he has an ebook that tells you what you should expect from your telemedicine professional, including um, protecting your, your health information and those kind of things. So uh, this is a really good resource for you guys, man. Um, and Dr. Justin, uh, Thank you again, brother. We yeah, really thanks for having me, Josh, and, and the Fitness Fire community. You guys are all doing great stuff, and you know I'm proud to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, working alongside, alongside Josh and in our networking group, and and you know it's been a, it's been a lot of fun learning from each other and, and going back and forth. So, um, I hope you guys are all safe, uh, you know, at home. Your families are well, uh, and you know, and, and I'm blessed to you know to be able bodied to. <laughs> and to, to help uh, the community thrive. And I think that's what we're going to all have to do together. We're going to do it together. And um, I think, uh, you know, Josh is great about building a community and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to, to be, uh, you know, privileged uh, to, to, to share my information and my knowledge with you guys. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. We'll have a phenomenal awesome. day, brother. We'll touch base soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, man. Have a good day. Take all care. All right, guys. Bye.